Hi, I'm Rich Breckner with Inside HPC, and we're here at SC11. I'm here with Bob Grossman, who's a faculty member at the University of Chicago. We're here to talk about HPC in the cloud. You know, Bob, I think there's people at differing mindsets on this, but is cloud really a viable model for high performance computing? Well, that's a good question. Um, I'm going to make a prediction. My prediction is within two to three years, you're going to see elastic on demand cloud systems that work quite well for mid-range HPC applications. And so um, someone who wants to run an application could go to um, a web portal, you know, with the right credentials, provision, elastically as much of a cloud system as they want that's specifically configured to run mid-range HPC types of applications. So what are the primary forces that would drive them to do that? Is it just simply more economical? What, what, what would be driving this, you think? Um, I think a, 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 a number of, of reasons. One of them is um, these types of systems would just be more specialized. They could be provisioned when they're needed in exactly the way that they're needed. And um, um, the, so that's number one. Number two, um, for certain applications, especially big data applications in which the data may already be present in the cloud and you just want to compute over the cloud, there may be, um, uh, these may, that may be the sweet spot for certain types of these HPC in the cloud applications. Um, a good example might be the, the big data biologists who today are being overwhelmed um, and need something. And these types of specialized systems may work quite well for them. Uh, today, some of the systems they, that, that they have access to really don't work well because of the big data or don't work well because of the, um, of the um, uh, amount of HPC computing that they need. And you know, we were talking earlier about big data and some of these Hadoop clusters, they, some of these cloud guys in, in the enterprise and doing in even the, some of this web stuff, they actually do big data better than the HPC camp, don't they? Yeah, that, that, that's, you know, um, I'm not sure people want to hear this, but um, I think you could argue um, that Hadoop-style systems um, are, are much more effective at when you have large data that's persistent for processing that persistent data with their model than uh, today's HPC systems in which there could be a long struggle to get the data into the system and get the data out of the system. You know, for multiple petabyte data, multiple petabyte problems in which the data is already there and you compute over it when you need it, that's, a, that's an awfully useful model for people working with big data. So, you know, we talk, the, the arguments against grid are, are long standing, right? I, I want to own my resource, right? You, do you foresee that there's going to continue to be that kind of resistance to change, especially while you're in the academic space? Um, I, I think that's an, that's an interesting point of view. I mean, my prediction is that, the, that these kinds of HPC in the cloud systems we're talking about um, will not initially be public cloud systems, but community, community cloud systems um, run by um, a university consortium that's interested in working together to sort of build these specialized systems um, and operate them. And so those kind of community clouds in which you essentially do own your own resources, but it's shared among the community, um, that, that may be a model that works well initially for HPC in the cloud. So what's coming around the corner? You made the prediction, right? A couple of years, I, this is coming, but how does that, how will that change how a researcher does their science? Um, well, I, I, my particular interest these days is in um, sort of science around large data, around big data, and um, the, the ability to um, have a science, you know, scientists, a typical scientist that I work, you know, um, they may come in with a multi-million dollar startup package. Um, they may generate a lot of data. Uh, they have, uh, you know, uh, teams that work to generate this data, um, but then they're, they're left to manage that data 
and they're left to um, analyze that data on their, uh, on their own. And these are data, at least in the biological area, that, that, that are just overwhelming. So, you know, what, what I see as a sort of the wave of the future is, you know, these kind of cloud, so these kind of cloud infrastructures will be just part of what universities do. So, um, you know, every once in a while you'll, you'll add a container to your cloud. Um, the, um, and um, the ability to sort of persistently manage the data will be just something that comes for free and the ability to compute over it uh, comes for free. Every few years you'll retire one of the containers, but um, the struggle right now to sort of constantly manage data and to constantly move the data around will be something in the past. And rather you'll just decide, you know, um, how you're gonna, how many containers you are, you're gonna buy, and you know, when you're gonna retire the old ones, and that this will be a lot easier to deal with. So um, that's, that's further out than, than a couple of years, but I think that's, that's closer to where we're going to this, to where we are today, where people are on their own to manage the data, and they're, and you know, they're being overwhelmed by it, and they can't effectively compute over it.